Hey, what's up you guys? Ben here. Today, I'll be doing a review of the piece Bell & Ross VR05. I've had the pleasure of owning this piece for about 7 months at this point, uh, so today I'll be sharing my thoughts and experience on this piece. I hope you guys are having a great year so far. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button because you don't want to miss out on any great watch content. And just to give you guys a brief synopsis before I start, I'll be going over the watch's history, uh, wearability, specs, user experience, etc. But enough talking, let's get down to business. The Bell & Ross BR05 was released back in late 2019 with the retail price of around $5,000. Its initial reception was mixed, some people loved it, and others called it a copycat of popular watch designs such as the AP Royal Oak and the Patek Philippe Nautilus. I can see where people are coming from, but quite frankly, the only thing that the BR05 has in common with those two watches is the integrated bracelet. The rest of the watch strongly resonates with the Bell & Ross DNA. The BR05 square case profile as well as the hour indices take inspiration from the likes of other watches in the Bell & Ross's lineup such as the BR01 and the BR03. So in my humble opinion, the BR05 does not play homage to AP or Patek. And I think it stays true to Bell & Ross's design philosophy. In any case, the BR05 has a lot to offer from its spectacular finishing to its gorgeous dial. If you wanted to purchase the BR05 at full retail, you'd be paying just over 5,000 US dollars. On the secondhand market, you'll find one for around 4,000 USD. If you're interested in the BR05, I would highly recommend that you check the secondhand market or at least try to get one at a discount at retail. The BR05 lineup now offers more than 30 different models and I chose to go for the Blue Steel. The BR05 was added to the collection to commemorate a special career milestone, and I think I made the right choice in choosing the BR05 Blue. Something about the blue dial and its unique case design drew me into the timepiece, and this is the timepiece that has received the greatest number of compliments out of all the watches that I own. If you're on the fence about this piece, I would highly recommend that you go to a local AD near you and see this watch in person because photos don't do this watch justice at all. Now let's move on to the technical specifications. The BR05 has the movement BR Caliber 321, which is a heavily modified Salita with 25 joules and it has a power reserve of approximately 40 hours. The power reserve is disappointing to be honest with you, considering that most watches in today's market come with 70 plus hours of power reserve. I mean look at Oris Aquis with 120 hours of power reserve. But as much of a letdown as this is, it's not really a deal breaker in my opinion, and I actually don't mind having to wind or wear to reset my watches. And the movement is actually finished quite well. It's got an industrial like finish that I think gives it an interesting look. The BR05 is 39.5mm in diameter and due to its integrated bracelet it doesn't have the lug to lug length, but it does have an end link to end link length of 50.7mm. The watch is about 11mm thick, so it's a very thin watch, meaning it can easily slide underneath any dress cuffs. When discussing a square watch, it's important to acknowledge its diagonal length, because unlike circular watches where the diagonal length equals its diameter, with square watches that is just not the case. The diagonal length of the VR05 is 45.8mm, which means that this watch will take up more real estate on your wrist than a circular watch with the same traditional dimensions. For comparison, here is the BR05 sitting next to a watch comparable in diameter, the Tudor Black Bay 58. Even with the square case considered, in my opinion at least, the BR05 is still in that sweet spot where it should fit men of most wrist sizes, and even some women. I would recommend this watch for a wrist size down to about 6 inches or approximately 15 and a quarter centimeter. For reference, my wrist size is 7.1 inches or about 18 centimeters. The BR05 has a water resistance of 100 meters so a casual dip into the swimming pool should be safe. Like many modern watches, the crystal is made of sapphire with anti-reflective coating 
and it's got loom on all of its indices, hour and minute hands. The loom is admittedly not the best, but it's decent enough. From my experience, the bracelet of the BRL5 has been one of its main highlights. It is exceedingly comfortable and it reflects light beautifully, attracting just the right amount of attention. And like I said earlier, the BRL5 has gotten the most amount of compliments out of all my watches, and I have to credit most of that to its great bracelet design and finishing. The bracelet is satin finish with the center links being polished. When you look at the bracelet out in natural light, it truly is mesmerizing. The bracelet comes with a butterfly clasp system, which isn't the best clasp design that's out there, but it does really fit the aesthetic of the watch. The clasp is simplistic and very clean looking. Regarding bracelet adjustment, the BRO5 has half links to accommodate, and I think most people will be able to get the correct fit without much of a problem. The dressy sporty design of the BRO5 makes it versatile for virtually any situations. This is the type of timepiece that can be worn in a casual attire all the way up to a business attire, and if you're daring enough, even with a suit. I've personally worn mine in many situations, from a cozy night spent in at home, to traveling, and to the office. It's unfortunate to say, but with petty theft becoming more and more common as a result of economic misfortunes, you want to be careful and not attract the wrong kind of attention when you're out and about with your watch. And well, this is a great piece to attract the kind of attention that you'd want from strangers. The BRO5 is shiny and handsome enough to warrant multiple compliments and even start some conversations, but it's not notable enough for anyone to want to rob you. So in my experience, I've had great time being able to engage in watch conversations with non-watch people without much worry. All in one, just like any other watch out there, the BRO5 is not perfect. It's got many strengths, from its comfortable bracelet, aesthetic appeal, simplistic dial layout, uh, wearability, versatility, and much more. But I think it's also important to acknowledge the negatives that exist. Three main points that I can think of are the power reserve, the use of the Salita movement on a $5,000 watch, and the mediocre loom. As much as these can definitely be viewed as negatives, I don't think that they're deal breakers. And here's how I justify to quote unquote overlook the negatives. In regards to the power reserve, I bet most collectors won't mind having to interact with their watch to reset the time, as I certainly don't. Furthermore, in regards to the Salita movement for the price, the movement has been heavily modified, so it's not like it's a factory unmodified Salita that's in this watch so you do have to take that into consideration. And lastly, the loom isn't the main selling point of this watch, so it's not really that big of a deal. And if any of you disagree, that's totally cool. We all have different preferences, and that's why there's so many different watches for us to choose from. Anyway, that'll be it for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, please do let me know your thoughts and questions down in the comment section down below. As always, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.